Hi, I'm Jack Koenig with Graco Industrial Lubrication Equipment, and I'm back one more time for another Module Flow video. This is probably going to be the last in the series, and I thought I would wrap things up by just doing a quick video about assembling a Module Flow modular pumping package. The three most basic components of the Module Flow packages are going to be the reservoir, the base plate manifold, and the pump itself. And whether we're talking about one of these cylindrical reservoirs or the rectangular tank to my left or any other module flow reservoir, any of the module flow reservoirs are going to be assembled in the same manner. The trickiest part is really going to be the intermediate base plate because there are a bunch of different fittings that go with the base plate. One thing about fittings, you want to use thread sealant anytime you're doing a, a tapered thread connection. Let's take a look at some of the components that go onto the base plate manifold assembly. This is a, an almost complete assembly. We have the gauge here in the gauge port. We have the indicator, part of the indicator assembly here. I'm going to get back to that. And then there's an elbow here, but then these two check valves, they look very similar. And when you look at the two check valves, it's hard to tell them apart. One of these is the reverse of the other. So one of them is for the system fill port and one of them is for the fluid outlet. The system fill port needs to have the male outlet and the fluid outlet check valve needs to have the female outlet. The arrow type shape on a check valve symbol is really the seat and then there's the ball next to it. So the ball is on the outlet end and the inlet is on the seat end. So if you think of it as an arrow, the arrow points to the inlet on a check valve. So just make sure when you're installing these that you're getting the right check valve in the right place or your pump won't work because it will be pumping backwards into a check valve and the check valve will just do its job and keep any fluid from flowing through it that direction. With the indicator port, we put these indicator assemblies in here and all of the module flow base plate assembly ship with yellow blowout discs. I discussed this in more detail in the base plate video, but just make sure that if you're doing oil, it's okay to stay with the yellow, but make sure that if you're going to grease that you're switching it out for either a red or an orange blowout disc or possibly even a different color if you need, need even more pressure. Then that just goes on there. And then let's talk about these two quarter inch plugs that come with the kit as well. One of them is a steel pipe plug and the other is a yellow plastic plug that looks like a pipe plug but then it has a hole in the center of it. That yellow plug is for the DA port. Most of these are going to be set up as a single acting assembly. So you're going to put one air solenoid in the back on the SA port and then you're going to put this yellow plug in the DA port to just keep it from getting debris in there. If you're actually using a four-way air solenoid and setting this up as a dual acting air motor, then you wouldn't use the yellow plug at all. But just make sure you don't put the steel plug in here because that's gonna prevent any airflow from venting out the backside of the air piston and therefore the pump won't be able to stroke. The, the Pipe plug is actually for your system fill check valve. Once you're done purging the system at the installation, you put the pipe plug in there to close that off and keep debris out of it as well. And then also just to keep any backflow from sneaking past the metal on metal check valve. Before I talk about air solenoids, one other thing I wanted to mention is O-rings. There are some O-rings that you need to keep track of. There is one O-ring that sits in this surface on the reservoir mounted base plate manifolds. So that make sure that you find the O-ring in the kit and put that in there before you put it on the bottom of the reservoir. If you're doing one of these wall mount or remote mount manifolds, there's no hole here because it's not the inlet. So there's nothing to seal here. So even though there's still that chamfer, there's no O-ring for this. The lube inlet is out here where the gauge port used to be. So if you're doing one of these, don't worry about O-rings at this stage. And then on the BSPP version, the this still needs an O-ring. And then you don't need thread sealant on 
all of these connections because these have that, that, uh, that soft seal on the face because that's how BSPP seals is with a face seal. You still get a yellow plug here. And then the one thing I wanted to point out though is that for the gauge, we still use NPT gauges and they just come with an adapter. And this has that face seal here, but you'd wanna put some thread sealant on the gauge itself when you're making this connection. This is what the air solenoid looks like. We got an, o there's an O-ring on each side of this as well. So keep in mind, you need to have both your, your O-rings installed and then it fastens on with a banjo bolt. So this could really go on in either direction. One thing I wanna point out is I've only ever heard about this problem once, but there's a little hole here that is the vent for the three-way valve. So that's the third way in this air solenoid. So when you mount this against the manifold, if you mount it in such a way that that vent hole is, is blocked by the manifold itself, it's not gonna work. It, it, you'd think there'd still be enough air passage for it to seep through there, but I've had this happen once where it was tightened up against the manifold so tightly that the pump wouldn't stroke. So just take a look and make sure either that the hole is twisted down so that it's out there or that you just put the, the whole thing on the other way so that the hole is on the back side. But then the, the banjo bolt just goes into here. And this is a straight thread, but it's an NPSF thread. So if you don't want to use our air solenoid, you can use whatever air solenoid you want with quarter inch NPT thread because you can put NPT male thread into an NPSF female port. And that's kind of the complete manifold. This is ready to attach to a reservoir now. So all, all we need to do with this is attach it to the reservoir and torque the two mounting screws to the proper torque to hold it against the reservoir. But it's not a lot of torque because this is just a straight thread and it's an O-ring seal. So all you're doing is putting enough torque on this to seal up the O-ring against the bottom of the reservoir. And then after that, the pump is just gonna go on the bottom and that has four screws and it just needs to be torqued up enough to seat the O-rings against this surface. But again, it's just seating some O-rings so, so it's not an excessive amount of torque. And that's all there really is to assembling a ModuFlow. I'm going to reshow the portion of assembling the pump and purging the air from the pump that I used in a previous video. And if you want more detail on some of these other features like low level switches or the high pressure blowout switch, there are separate videos that go into detail on those components. Check out those other videos in my series if you'd like more detail on that. When installing a replacement pump or reinstalling your rebuilt pump, before you actually attach it to the base plate, make sure you have the right O-rings in the right places. There are three small O-rings that are all the same size two for the air ports and one for the lube outlet port. And then the bigger O-ring, this is the lube inlet port. This is the piece that actually presses against the flapper valve and receives the grease from the reservoir. But just make sure all these O-rings are in place so that you don't make a mess later. Reattaching the pump is a little bit trickier than taking it off because now you have to line up some screw holes and try not to let a bunch of grease leak out in the process because once that flapper valve is pushed, then the grease wants to flow again. So again, we wanna push the pump all the way up and support it with our hand so that big O-ring seals around the flapper valve. And now that we have that done, we can be a little more leisurely in installing the other screws. But I need to leave it loose enough that I can still twist this a little bit and line up the other screws. These are straight threaded screws, so you don't have to torque them on really tight. Just get them snug and they're not gonna go anywhere. Now our pump is installed so we can move on to bleeding the pump. Frequently when you put the pump back on, you can just cycle the pump a few times and it will bleed the air out itself. But if you have a real tacky grease or some other stubborn fluid that doesn't wanna move through, then this bleed screw right here can be loosened and the bleed port is down on the bottom here. And I'm gonna show you how it looks when the grease is squirting out the bottom of the bleed port. 
one important detail is that this set screw actually captures a ball that forms sort of a check valve. And when you loosen it, it allows the ball to come off of the seat. It doesn't need to be removed. In fact, it shouldn't be removed because if you lose that ball, then you can't seal this port anymore and the pump won't work until you replace the ball. So just loosen it a few turns and then cycle the pump a couple of times. See there, because this pump was already primed, we're getting a, we're getting the full shot at 240 thousandths. But that's the hole you wanna look for. That's where the grease will bleed out of during the bleeding procedure. Now that it's bled, we can just tighten it up again. And again, it just needs to be snug because you're just pressing a ball onto a seat and cycle the pump some more and you'll get fluid out of your outlet. Now that the package is fully assembled and the air has been purged out of the pump, it's ready to be installed and used with the divider valve system of your choice. Thank you for watching this series of videos. If you have any questions about ModuFlow or any other Graco products, feel free to contact us and thank you for choosing Graco.